The 4th of July shooting uh, suspect, uh, suspect charged with seven counts of first-degree murder. On Tuesday, the Lake uh, County State Attorney Eric Reinhardt announced that a suspect, Robert Cremo III, has been charged with seven counts of first-degree murder in connection to the mass shooting at Highland Park 4th of July parade. We anticipate dozens of more charges centering around each of the victims, psychological victims, physical victims, attempted murder charges, aggravated discharge, uh, 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 discharge charges, aggravated battery charges. There will be dozens more charges against Mr. Cremo, but these seven counts of first-degree murder will lead to a mandatory life sentence should he be uh, convicted without the possibility of parole. Uh, and then you have a couple other stories. I'll read one of them here to you. Uh, uh, Highland Park tells, uh, um, boom, uh, police flagged Highland Park shooter clear and present danger in 2019. He later cleared four background checks. Robert Bobby Cremo III, 21 years old, a suspect in a mass shooting that killed seven people and wounded dozens of others on 4th of July parade, was still able to clear state-required background checks to purchase firearms on at least four separate occasions between 2020 and 2021, the Illinois State Police reported. In September 2019, ISP received a clear and present danger report on the subject from the Highland Park Police Department. The report was related to threats the subject made against his family and uh, not willing to move forward on a complaint. Next thing you know, obviously, this is documented and the event take place. you have any thoughts on this, Adam? I mean... At this point, we're just going to go run around in circles and talk about what needs to get done here. And, you know, background checks, uh, health, uh, mental health. The gun. It's a, it, it just We're just talking in circles here. You talked about you shot a video and you're like, oh, we need a after Uvalde uh, a how-to video. What can we do about gun control? And you talked about, well, I think we need to redo the video because of this shooting. And then I, not even sarcastically, I said, well... Don't wait too long to do that because there's going to be another shooting. 100%. And that's the, the look, we're going to talk in circles here. The, the kid, somehow his father co-signed to get the gun and he passed these uh, background checks. Somehow this kid, you showed a video today that he reenacted what he would do. In a and school nobody shooting. said nothing. So yep. I, I think, you know, extreme times, drastic times call for drastic measures. I'm going to give an angle that nobody I don't hear talking about. The family of this person or the family of any shooter, what happens to them? Nothing. What happens, like, I, I understand that the, the father didn't pull the trigger or the, the grandma or the uncle. Paul. But these people have a complete lack of regard for human life. But I assume at some, in some level in their life, this person cares about his grandma or cares about his dad or his family or his sister. And I'm not saying that those people need to go to jail over this. But that family, something needs to happen to have accountability. Whereas as you're about to, this fucking kid dresses up as a woman, covers up his tattoos, and he's going on a roof and he's about to shoot a bunch of people. And he knows that he's going to say, all right, once I do this, I'm going to jail the rest of my life or I'm going to die. And that's it. He's only thinking about himself. But in the back of your mind, if you're an active shooter and you're thinking, whoa, hold on. This is really my entire family is going to uh, face the ramifications of this. Or my grandma is going to go to jail. I'm going way completely off no, or, the deep end. Or, I like, I like Maybe that, that will, be like, oh, will like, trigger, no pun intended, something in him to say, you know what? I love my family too. I hate myself. I hate people. The girl that didn't want to kiss me in school. Yeah. The video game. My butt. Like I love something me. extreme needs to be done here because if it's still red flag laws, background checks, mental health, you know accessibility to guns it's the same fucking talking yeah. points we need to do something different and you know what tripped me out about this story when i heard this and how it's crazy how this happened in chicago right how this gets only this type of mass shooting got it's there, you know people are still talking about it was all big do you know how many mass shootings are and you talked about this adam a couple podcasts ago yeah. it's like three or more people right uh chicago from september of may uh, 2018 till till today 811 people killed or injured in mass shootings mm -hmm. This this one's the only one that gets this past weekend. I think there was like eighty or uh, some people shot, and like I think another nine yeah. or ten on top of this. It's just crazy how that gets story. It's those people that were at the parade that matter, but all the people that are getting killed, all the minorities inside but, Chicago. Uh, that mayor, whoever's the mayor of Chicago, I get it. Horrible job. What do you do? Like like we keep talking about changing everything. You guys got to do. How do you how do you still have a job as a mayor of Chicago? I know it's a fun, whoever comes in, it's horrible. None of them are really doing anything. Here's a crazy thing about this this uh, this guy. His father 
ran against the current mm -hmm. Highland Park's mayor as a mayor mayoral race. I don't know if you got what I just said. Yeah, the, the Democratic? The, the killers, the, the, the guy that yeah, did his dad. this. His dad ran against the current mayor of the city where oh, he did wow. the shooting. Wow. That's that's a little that's, creepy that's right there. The story. Yeah, when you hear the story. I think the takeaway is when your son shows up at home and he has a tattoo on his forehead and on his cheek, you've got a problem and don't let him get a gun. Or when they right. wear those tight, tight uh, army I mean, shoes. That yeah, and, and, and you know people. We're, we're my talking. dad would have kicked my yeah. ass <laughs> if I would have shown up. I mean, my dad used to not let yeah. me come into the house without having to look at him in the eye. Yes, the shit about you get into your house late at night when your parents are asleep. Yeah, of course. You know what my dad would do? He went to sleep in my bed <laughs> to make sure I had to wake him up. But and then the, I had to face him to make a, sure I a, wasn't stoned or uh, drunk or I had something else going there's on. There's a lot of that's Gen called Z accountability. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.